Okay. All set. I'll see you a little later. Thanks, Athena. Uh, good evening. Uh, seeing that we have a quorum in attendance, I'm calling the November 19th, 2020 meeting of the Town Service and Outreach Committee to order at 4.32-ish. Um, Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee. I'm um, going to quickly call on each member of the committee by name to confirm that you can hear me and we can hear you. Alyssa Brewer. Present. Darcy Dumont, present. Dorothy Pam. Present. Evan Ross. Present. George Ryan. Present. Okay, those assisting the meeting will be monitoring committee member connections and if necessary, we'll pause the meeting until you're reconnected. Um, we request that everyone be patient with the process. Um, George is helping with the screen sharing today. So public comment does not appear that there's any public here. Um, so uh, we will ask again at the end of the meeting. So um, I propose rearranging the agenda substantially um, because of the fact that the town manager is not gonna get here until 5.30. And um, so I am um, proposing um, since we need him for the discussion of the revisions of the public way policy and to look at his recommended committee appointments. I mean, we don't really need him, but it's nice if we do have him. Um, uh, also, we had planned to hear from the sponsors of the surveillance technology bylaw tonight, just in case any, nobody, nobody is, well, nobody's watching. So <laughs> just in case someone wonders at some point in the future. Um, in particular, um, on the possibility of the HRC taking on the role of the advisory committee originally written into the bylaw proposal, but the HRC is actually discussing it tonight. So it made sense to put off that discussion until another meeting or possibly two. So we had three items referred to TSO at the town council meeting on Monday, two of which are time sensitive and need recommendations for the December 7th town council meeting. The SUFA sign proposal referral and the town council public way policy revision proposal both need recommendations from this committee by December 7th, um, which means we need to discuss them tonight. To, we have to decide them by either tonight or our next meeting on um, December 3rd. Uh, so, and the third topic that was referred was the North Commons proposal, which needs a re recommendation within 90 days. So because of the time crunch, um, we've also delayed the brief introduction about a proposal for a townwide residential parking policy, which Dorothy and George were gonna to present tonight. So we're going to put the delay that until a later meeting. Um, so I hope everybody is good with all of this. Um, so what I'm proposing is that we do the SUFA signs first, um, and uh, the public way policy revision proposal after the town manager gets back and that if we have extra time before he gets here, that we look at our work plan and look at our minutes, et cetera, et cetera, and get them done on this hour. Um, and then we'll have time for the public way policy when he gets here. And if we have time, the appointments, and if we, don't have time for the appointments, we can do them at the next meeting because it will still be before the December 7th town council meeting. And we will have the flexibility to go over if we have to at our next meeting, but we don't have the flexibility at this meeting to go over time. That is because we have our town council public forum on the budget at 6.30. So here I'm taking up a lot of time just by talking. So. Um, does that sound reasonable? Good. Um, so, uh, 
I asked for feedback. For, uh, so we're going to start with the SUFA signs. I asked for feedback from all counselors on the sign proposal for tonight's meeting and received feedback from the Finance Committee and from just one counselor. Um, I asked for a later deadline to submit the counselor comments on the public way policy, but I figure we can just get our comments and questions in tonight. Um, and that will give us time to look at their comments on December 3rd. That's my proposal. Um, so we have staff here, Brianna. Sunred is here tonight to talk about the SUFA sign issue. Um, uh, we have in our packet the answers that she provided that the Finance Committee submitted, which is in the packet. Um, and so um, I was going to suggest that, Brianna, you give a just a brief summary again uh, for purposes of anybody watching this meeting in the future so that they know what we're talking about. Um, and then my thought was that we could go over the, any remaining financial questions. Well, actually I thought first we should look, since we do have a review process that we haven't mentioned in a really long time, um, that we should just go through the questions in, the, in our review process, just to make sure we've covered everything talk about the financial questions and then uh, take questions from you about the financial issues and then uh, take questions about any other area like placement, aesthetics, whatever. Um, okay, so Brianna, could you give us a brief summary? And we do have the slide deck if you wanna show any of those again, any of those slides. Thank you, Councillor Dumont. I'm happy to do that. I, I do have the slides pulled up on my screen as well. So if it's easier, I'm, I'm happy to share um, my screen and do the, the overview and then we can take it to the next step that you guys want to. Sure. Um, and I don't think we probably need to go through the whole thing that we did on Monday. Um, yeah. Just, you know, brief, brief overview. Why don't I pop up the picture of the signs rendered in Amherst and I'll just use that as a jumping off point to talk about the, the other elements, if, if that makes sense. If, sure. Give me one moment to share my screen and then I can launch into that. Is everyone able to see my screen, which should be, um, let's get back to the, the page here. Uh, this is a, a, a rendering, a, a simple rendering of um, a potential look for the signs. Can everyone see that? Yep, okay. So um, what we're looking at right now are the proposed SUFA um, solar powered communication and information signs. We are proposing three of them coming to the downtown Amherst area as a pilot project. Uh, the purpose of the sign um, you'll see on the, the left hand side is um, an e-ink screen that can provide timely information updates and emergency uh, communications to people passing by in the downtown area visiting the town, um, living in the town or whatever their purpose uh, might be. We will have um, information such as transit, weather, um, events or any emergency communications that we need to share out as part of that front display on the left. On the right hand side, you see a sample mock-up of what the back of the sign would look like, uh, borrowing from our wayfinding designs and style guide that is currently um, being worked on for signs coming online in the spring of 2021. The other element of the project are solar power charging cores, which I will also bring up a picture of. Right here, you see this um, red contraption with a solar panel on the, on, the, on the top. The other portion of the project is to um, install three solar power charging stations in the downtown area as well at key locations of uh, key high traffic areas or transit areas um, in order to allow community members and members of the public to charge their devices 
um, while they're visiting our town. And this is especially poignant right now with public buildings um, being closed for the most part, in large part. Um, so whereas some community members might have used the library to access um, power sources or to access the internet, uh, they'd be able to charge their devices in three spots throughout the downtown area. And we are proposing this pot project with a, with a shorter timeline and turnaround than normal because it is a CARES eligible project. Um, it will be funded by through CARES funds um, for the first year. And then um, because it's a pilot project, we will reevaluate the success of the signs um, as we close that pilot year. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and hopefully respond to any questions at this point or prompts for the next um, asset that you'd like to see. Yeah, I would um, just like to run through the, um, the questions that we usually ask at our preliminary presentation, just to make sure that we have them covered and just to make sure no counselors want any further um, answers about those before we get, and then I would just hope that George could pull up the, the financial questions and answers after that. But um, the questions that we ask in our preliminary presentation normally it are, who are the sponsors, how and when the measure came to the committee, how the measure relates specifically to the committee charge, the purpose of TSR review, the projected timeline for review, uh, what information, knowledge, and background information the sponsors have provided, including input from relevant town staff, input from town stakeholders, relevant town policies, plans, goals, or regulations that are pertinent, and best practices in other communities. So I would just ask if there is anything there that the other counselors are feel like we need to dig into or whether we're okay to just go forward with the financial questions. And let me see, I can't see your hands. Uh, Dorothy. Um, I, I had originally raised it for some another point, but your questions did prompt this to mind. Um, we're told this is a woman owned Massachusetts based company, but some of my thoughts, particularly after reading through today's answers, um, began to really think about data, who has the data, who controls the data, and what are they going to do with it? And um, it's not the town of Amherst. We've been told, no, we will not control the data. So um, if the phone, I mean, I, I totally agree, phone chargers, yes, but part of my brain is saying, if we need them and we want them, we should pay for them ourselves as a town of Amherst. And then we could control, we would say, we're not selling your data. We're not sucking out your phones. We're not doing any of those things. Because yeah. I think we will all agree we need public charging stations. But I'm not sure about some of the other aspects because um, it's really great to get something free and to be told you don't have to really do much work with it. But then the question is, okay, why do they want it? It's like Facebook, it's free, but it isn't. And it's using our data and doing all kinds of things. So that's really my question is, how did this come to us? Um, and I can see why CARES Act would pay for charging stations, but I don't see how CARES Act really relates to wayfinding signs. I, I find that frivolous. Um, so, so my really question is, how did this come to us and more about the company? and what they plan to do with the data. Um, I can't believe they're not going to do something with it. May I, may I respond? Yes, yes please. Yes, okay. Um, so there is no data that's collected. Um, yeah, I'll start with the charging stations. There's, there's no data or data collected um, as part of the charging stations. We will own them outright as part of this um, procurement and this, this contract. So whether or not we decide to keep the signs um, 
will not impact the fact that we will own the charging cores outright. Um, and, and I think you might, when we get to the financial questions that's mentioned a few times, um, as far as the signs being justified for CARES Act, um, basically the wayfinding element is a bonus because it's the back um, of the information screen. So that's kind of a bonus um, for us. And, and the, it's, we're flexible in terms of what we can have on the back of that. We could have public health information rather than a wayfinding sign. Uh, but it was justified through CARES funding for the signs because it is another way for us to provide timely informational and communications emergency updates, um, particularly to populations who might be digitally unbanked um, in mm -hmm. our community, um, those, those who don't have access to internet and or devices in, in other fashions. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the, the key component of why it would be CARES eligible, um, because we would be using it to um, update on COVID-19 updates for the town, um, provide any updated mask mandates or any other emerging um, information that we need to share with the public. Mm -hmm. So it adds another, another avenue or another channel in our kind of communications toolkit. Right. And there is, there is no um, data that, or data that's collected from the sign. Um, it, so there's nothing that's retained, no personally identifying information, mm -hmm. no cameras. Um, so I, I hope that that answers your questions, but I'm happy to um, dive in deeper to a certain element of that, if you'd like. Well, just thinking of a couple of movies and books, um, which came to my mind just this afternoon, but um, one of them is the, was it really true sad love story by Gary Steingart, um, where as you walk by ads that are perfectly suited to you because you've got your phone in your pocket and they know who you are because of your phone. Um, are just for you going by. Or another movie, which I'm sure Evan knows much better than I do. Um, it's where, it's probably Matt Damon, but he's running away and he's like in the subway and there's ad scenes, but they're really, it's all surveillance. And of course surveillance is on my mind because we're dealing with a surveillance bylaw. So um, that kind of possible uses are things that kind of flash through my mind. You've answered some questions. I like the idea that the town would totally own the charging stations because I trust the town, okay? I mean, that's something I do. Maybe Alyssa would say I shouldn't, but I do. But I'm not sure some other company somewhere with a profit motive, which could be bought and sold. You know, wonderful lady could be running the company. She starts to make money. Some, you know, venture capitalist takes it and it becomes a tool <laughs> in our, our total surveillance. Okay, that's it for me today, probably. Thank you. Thank you for your questions, Councillor Pim. Part, part of Dorothy's question was um, where where the proposal came from and did it um, and how did how did how did it originate? It originated through um, myself, um, the town manager Paul Balkaman, and Superintendent of Public Works um, Guilford Mooring when we were looking for other ways, especially upon the initial closing of buildings um, and identifying ways in which we could support, um, especially community members who were relying on our buildings and our spaces to get access to information and to get access to power. Um, especially as we got closer to thinking about bringing a, um, a shelter for the season into the, the downtown space, it became more apparent that we needed to find some sort of tool to, um, uh, especially aligning with that location, having access to power, having um, improved access to information. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, other, do, does anyone else have questions related to the review process? Anything that we need to know about other towns' best practices or other stakeholders that need to weigh in or anything along those lines? No, okay. So why don't we look at the, the questions, the, the um, finance committee questions and Brianna's answers. If you could pull them up, George. Okay, I'm going to uh, try to share my screen. Oh, I, I, also, I also have them up. If it's any easier, I'd be happy to share them, but just let me know. Well, um, let me just, why don't you, Brianna, since you are more familiar with this technology and you've got it right there, um, why don't you go ahead? Okay. In the interest of getting this done quickly. Sure thing. 
Just one moment. If you have to go, I will try. But go ahead. All right. Are you all able to see my screen? I yes. Make it bigger. Yeah. That's okay. great. Thank you. Okay. So um, I don't know. I mean, we just got these today, right? Um, so I I think it might make sense to for you, Brianna, to just briefly go through your answers, um, unless anyone has objection to that. Um, uh, whose hand is that? Evans. I, I had a question that was just related to the finances. Um, okay. Um, can ask, because I think that it relates to uh, question four. So I can either ask it now or I can wait. Why don't we, why don't we wait? Um, okay. So go ahead, Brianna. Okay. Do you, would you like me to repeat the questions as part of this process? Sure. Okay. So the first question, um, finance director, the finance director told us that the first year costs would be charged to CARES Act funds, and it is approximately $25,000. How much of that is for the informational signs and how much is for the charging stations? So the cost uh, for the charging stations that we do in fact get to keep is $6,000 for the three charging station cores. Um, and then we will own those outright. And then $19,000 for the three SUFA signs for the, for the first uh, year license agreement. Okay, Evan, do you have a question about that? No, okay. Uh, any, anyone else have a question about that? Um, okay, number two. Is there any risk that if the town signs a contract with the vendor that it will not be covered by the CARES Act? So the spending um, has been pre-approved by the state after the finance director submitted the request in narrative earlier um, as part of the, uh, the approval process in order to even uh, spend the CARES funding. So before we even get to a project we, um, that might be CARES funded, we, we go through the portal on the state's website to see if it would be eligible for reimbursement. And this one was um, approved. Okay, thank you. Any other questions about that? All right, um, three. Who will market the advertisements and bear the risk that there will be fewer buyers than expected? SUFA, the company um, that will be providing us the, the signs and the charging stations, handles all marketing and advertising, and they make an effort to work with the local business community by reaching out directly and hosting general information ses sessions so that the local businesses in Amherst will understand how to use the platform and optimize it for their business. SUFA typically also works with local chambers of commerce as well. And SUFA bears all risk if there are fewer buyers than expected. Okay, questions about that? So I think maybe this is where my question might be useful okay. for me. Um, I, so, and this is also relates to the next question. I'm having a little trouble understanding how the advertising system um, and the revenue part of it works. And I guess the reason is on the one hand, the answers in this document explain that they will sell advertising space on these and they have to make $2,500 a year in advertising space. The presentation that we received said that one of the benefits is it will offer free advertising to local businesses. And so I'm, I'm, there's a disconnect there that my mind is having trouble with. How is this an opportunity to offer free advertising for local businesses while at the same time ensuring that they make at least $2,500 a year on sign in advertising? Sure, great question, Councillor Ross, thank you. So the, it's not normal that they're gonna be offering the free advertising, but due to COVID-19, they are now they are currently offering that as a free service to local businesses as a, um, you know, added tool or incentive um, to assist. Once things change, and I guess it, as part of the presentation, I, it, it was hard because we don't have a finite date when that will cut over. Um, but right now, because of COVID-19 and the, the implications with the local economy, they are offering that for free. Um, and my understanding is until that situation changes, which I would love to say is a certain date, but I don't know when that is. Um, 
and I would imagine that would be based upon when things in in the economy change and when COVID-19 is not, you know, at the same level that it is right now. Can I, can I follow up? Go ahead, Evan. So, and this does get into the next question, so I probably should have just waited, but since we're on it. Um, so, you know, later you say if they assess based on advertising revenue from the first year that they generate 2,500 in advertising, I, I guess, I'm, how would they assess that they're going to be able to do that if they're doing the advertising for free? And then I guess the second question is when it does, if and when it does shift over to something where it's, they're not doing the free thing and it's all paid advertising, is there, do they still prioritize local or because it's a much bigger company, is it essentially, it could be ads for, you know, Acura or whatever. No, thank you for that question. And that it's definitely worth clarifying. So um, right now, I believe it, with this pilot project year, every month that's not that they're not charging for these ads to be utilized would not count in that assessment. Um, so with if within that year, let's say three months, we're back online and charging with the advertising and trying to meet that quota, um, that it would be prorated. Um, as far as prioritizing of local ads versus um, other ads, I do not have that an answer to that, but I can find out rather quickly um, by reaching back out to our contact in the company with that specific question. Um, Alyssa. Yeah, that's my same question. So I think that's really important to be able to answer. I mean, we have an Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce now, first of all, not all our downtown or Amherst based businesses actually belong to the chamber. So that's part of the issue, but then part of the challenge, I should say. But then there are also plenty of businesses that are outside of Amherst town lines that are members of the chamber. And so I'm gonna mention two restaurants which would probably not appreciate being equivalent in people's minds, but or that run them, but I actually partake of both of them. So I think it's fair. One is Wendy's, which is in Hadley, and one is Johnny's, which is in Amherst. So if I'm looking for advertising revenue as SUFA, surely I'm going to places like Wendy's to get them to advertise. But, you know, can Johnny's, can Momo, can other local businesses now during this free period, right, there can be a period of outreach where the, the chamber can help us say, yes, maybe even to non-chamber members, um, we can work this out for Amherst. But as it moves forward, how are, do we ensure that they aren't just all ads for businesses that might not even be in Hadley, that might be just generic larger businesses? I'm, I'm a little uneasy about that. I'm just taking notes here so that I can make sure I ask your questions back uh, accurately with, with Sufa. Uh, are there other questions about this, Dorothy? Yes, it's about the advertisements. Um, part of this is based on my reactions to advertisements that are on my free media. I have, have a Macy's charge. I like Macy's. But for some reason on my email, they are posting some really gross ads. It's just of uh, women in underwear, which in previous times in some circles would be considered semi-pornographic. But this is Macy's, you know, a really family store. So I'm quite puzzled by it. And they'll say, oh, that's just, you know, an okay ad. Um, we would not have any say in these ads and yet they'd be on our streets. So that, that bothers me a little bit since I don't find good taste going on on um, the internet that I use and I use very conservative internet. Um, do you have any response to that, Brianna? Uh, to, to the level of control of advertising, of the advertising. Um, yeah. I, I, again, will, I have that on my list to, to, to reach out. I know that we don't directly control it. Um, I have a little bit of information about how, um, I think it was in response to maybe Councillor Brewer's question about it being accessible and cost to smaller businesses. Um, so I was able to get a little bit of information about that, but I can, I can broaden um, the request for information and, and get a little bit more detail to include, to uh, include that scope. I also have a question about the cost, Brianna, and that is um, how, how much 
would it cost for for what period of time for say Hastings wanted to advertise or some local restaurant what is it for you know x amount for one week or how does that work so they have um in the information that I received at that obviously outside of the COVID period where that's now being offered as a free service, but when it does get back to a paid service, it's um, something that is an, an $99 a month, which, um, and it could be seasonal. So a, a business who really wants to advertise only in the summer could sign up to just do that for those three months and put a pause on advertising on the sign. And then maybe if they wanted to pick up back for the holidays, they could come back online during the months of November and December, for example, for the monthly fee. So how does that work? Are they just, are they just, they're rolling throughout the day? So they're different. Yeah, yeah they have to be. There are a whole lot of different ads mm -hmm. in a day. Yes. Yeah, so there would be, and I'm just going to, since my screen is up and showing, just to remind you of the, the, the portion of the screen that um, would host different ads would be, and I hope you can see this, uh, the bottom left-hand um, piece of the screen. Bottom left-hand piece of the screen. So, oh, okay, right. Kind of where this square is. Yeah. Okay. And so, I, I, and I will, and I will also say, you know, I will get back with Sufa for those questions, but um, also it, it, it is in many communities um, and I'm, I can certainly ask specific questions to some of those host communities. Okay. Um, for example, Brookline has 24 of them and just to see what their experience since they've been online for a little longer, I can ask their specific experience about the ads just to maybe alleviate some of the um, concerns or answer some of the questions a little bit better. Okay, Alyssa, do you have another question? Sorry, the, the, the other com community is, is, thank you very much for offering that, Brianna, that you'll reach out. That was gonna be my other question. Um, and Dorothy? Yes, um, we're still in four. It says the cost of operating for one sign is 2,500 which they would pay if the advertising revenue was working. But if we, if it wasn't sufficient for them and we decided to keep it, I'm trying to figure out what would that be for? How would it cost $2,500 a year to maintain the sign? So it's to maintain the sign, um, you know, as part of the, a part of the um, project is they, there's weekly maintenance. Um, it would cover any of the costs for redoing the design on the custom front and back vinyl that you saw in the picture that I showed with the, the wayfinding elements. Mm -hmm. um, also the, the technology itself, we, we get access to um, a dashboard, a cloud-based dashboard where um, staff or myself in, in town would be able to kind of push out notifications and change the, the look and view of the screen. So all of those all of those costs would be, um, you know, part of what we would we end up paying as an operating cost should ad revenue be insufficient. So you're saying it's really taking up tech time, which might involve some extra employee or might take some of the time off of other things, but um, it's, it's not really, mo not too much of it is for physical stuff. It's mostly keeping up the, um, the ads, the look, the design, the web? Yeah, I'd say it was a combination of both the physical maintenance of the sign and the maintenance of the, um, the information that's um, being okay. sent to the sign. Thank you. Has everybody had an opportunity to read the answer to uh, number four? Yes. Um, okay. Are those remaining hands still relevant? Um, okay, so number five, um, I think we also covered how much of uh, town staff will be required and has that cost been quantified? Um, Would you like me to read the uh, response, Councillor Dumont? Or? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so the town staff um, time commitments, in this case, the communications manager or myself, uh, we anticipate to be minimal. 
the communications manager will have access to an online cloud-based dashboard to push out periodic updates to the message screen, similar to the town's other existing information channels. Other information on the display, such as transit times, town social media, weather and clock time, et cetera, will be pulled from existing sources or feeds and populated automatically onto the signs in real time. The physical maintenance of the signs is completed by SUFA on a weekly schedule or as needed and is included in the cost. How frequently will you change the, the, um, the, the periodic updates? As, as frequently as, um, as is needed or deemed uh, appropriate in terms of you know, an emerging um, information or if there's an important council meeting, um, similar to how we utilize our existing channels and um, right now, it, it would be a, a kind of an add-on to the existing options or buffet of options that we have available to us to push out notifications. So um, as, as, as frequent um, as needed, but I, I would imagine, for example, if we had a, a big issue, like an, a new emergency order, we might leave that up for a little bit um, until the next timely update was needed. But so, so to answer more succinctly as, as frequently or as, um, as little to as frequently as we needed to. Okay. Um, any other questions about that? Um, so the number six is about ongoing costs such as insurance. Um, you want to read that, Brianna? Absolutely. So there are no ongoing costs to the town. SUFA takes full responsibility for the install, maintenance, and repair if needed of all hardware. So there will be not, there will not be any additional costs incurred to the town after the, the first payment is made. And um, do you... How, what's the longest time that any town that has adopted this, how, how, what's the longest time that they have had SUFA signs? I know that uh, many communities have at, recently added some. So I think the, the longest is probably two or three years at this point. Um, so it's an, anywhere from, you know, many communities are now trying to get them online, obviously, because of in response to COVID-19. So there's new communities coming online more rapidly. Um, but some communities like Boston and Malden have had them um, for over a year or two in some cases. So we don't have any idea about, you know, what might be the problems in five years no. after. Um, so, uh, Alyssa. I'm sorry, maybe I'll hold off until we're done with this list because I just want to go back. I want to belabor advertising uh, types a little bit more, but let, I didn't mean to interrupt. So let's just see if there are any other questions about uh, the financial aspect or anything related to these questions um, before we go over um, Mandy Joe's question, which is about placement. Um, any other questions about financial stuff. Actually, it is financial. Go ahead, Alyssa. Um, this separate one. Um, I don't feel like we answered the question in six about insurance. And so if someone's injured because they decide to climb the sign, because you know that's never happened in Amherst, um, then that's not any more our problem than like if they climb on a bench, right? I mean, what protection level do we have in there? Um, so I, I'd have to pull up the contract, which was reviewed several times um, by KP Law, and I believe the liability um, in that case is also belongs to SUFA. Uh, but I could I could pull up the um, specific language. Um, I just don't have it at hand at the moment. That's totally fine. If you could forward it so we could share it with the town council, that would be perfect. I will put that on my list definitely. Thank you. Okay, so um, if there aren't any other questions about um, financial issues, we have this one question from Mandy Joe about the placement southeast corner versus northwest corner of uh, for one of the SUFA signs. Um, Would you like me to read the answer? And I'm no, I, that's fine. We can we can just read it um, uh, if. Do counselors have questions about either that or any other placement questions? Um, Alyssa? Hmm. 
No. Okay. Um, Evan. Yeah, I guess um, this is since we're talking placement broadly. Um, actually, about the charging stations, um, and I guess I'm curious. Um, one of them, is, so so I can I can make sense of all of them. I think right. One's at a bus stop. One's essentially in front of the shelter, and one's in front of the library. And so these all make sense. Um, but I guess I, I guess I, I wonder one if that's why they are where they are. And you may have said that Monday night, but you presented at like three in the morning, and so <laughs> yeah, I don't really remember. Um, um, and then two, I actually really liked the idea of having one at a, a, um, a high traffic bus stop, and that sort of made sense because people are sort of already sitting there waiting for the bus. And so I was wondering if there was a thought about um, for the other two, you know, if maybe in front of the library is not the best place, and maybe it should be at um the the bus stop like uh, by spring street which serves like the 31 or something like that um since I, I don't think a lot of people are often sitting in front of the library at that location at, at those benches but they off they always are at bus stops right and it would also sort of pair with the new shelters thank you councillor ross yes i i i agree and i and i we, they were chosen for those reasons, as you mentioned. So the, the St. Bridget's um, is a high traffic bus stop. It has good sun, which we could accommodate um, the solar the, in the space to put the solar charging core there. Um, and for similar reasons here, um, outside of what was once BART's in proximity to the UU church. Um, and and these, these locations aren't fixed. So, you know, upon that feedback, we could certainly, if the sun is right and the, um, the, the site is correct, then we could, you know, instead of having something outside the Jones, it could be something that is moved either before the initial install or based off of um, feedback afterwards, because I, I'll just say that it's a, it's a quick four bolt installation. Um, so we can move these and I, I don't want to offer up the services of public works, um, you know, carte blanche, but they, um, Guilford Mooring, as well as, as the company, have walked the sites and um, you know agreed that viewing them for the what minimal site prep work was needed and um, proximity to some of those high traffic locations, as well as being optimized for sun. So um, we could have that moved down to be close to one of the other transit centers with ease. Dorothy. All right, I'm looking at the bus stop picture and the last couple of pages, there's one without the bus stop shelter and without the kiosk. And it has a power box, a waste basket, two signs that say bus stop, a blue plastic, maybe newspaper container, a white plastic, maybe newspaper, a real estate container and a bench. And I admit they all look kind of messy and isolated. And it in fact does look better after the bus stop, the next picture is put there, but then they've added the information kiosk. And I have to tell you that aesthetically thinking about the green, the common, what we're spending to put into it, that is a really messy site. And I, I'm just thinking, can we make charging stations as part of our bus stop shelters? Um, can we eliminate some of these, those plastic boxes there because it's it's getting to be just all kinds of little tchotchkes in a row and each is needed in perhaps in one way or the other but adding the information kiosk and and this spring street one does not have the solar charging station there um is is not good so i'm just thinking is there a way to this is the offer that's been presented to the town i know it's attractive and i know it seems free because of being able to use cares money but if one were planning on an information kiosk and solar charging stations, is that how you would do it? Or would you try to, you know, integrate them into bus stops, which is a good place to do it? I mean, I agree with, you know, if given the proper planning and someday that they should, they would be well suited to be integrated into the bus shelters. And I know it's not my project, so I, I don't know the specifics. Um, with the, the new bus shelters that are coming online, I don't think that that is an option, um, which is why we've been trying to pair some of this technology 
to, to go um, in, in conjunction with some of those existing um, or, or infrastructure that's coming online. Um, I'm not sure if there was another question in there that I should respond oh. to, but I, I agree with you. Um, yeah, it relates to Evan's statement about in front of the Jones, and I, and I don't know whether uh, he was thinking this way, but some people might not want that in front of the Jones just be for aesthetic reasons and say, no, let's just have the front of the building looking nice in the lawn. Um, and what other structures the, the library has to put up in terms of tents or tables and chairs, not adding more things there. Um, and I, I thought a bus stop is a good place to put these utilitarian things, particularly since it has the bus stop times. You know, that's, if I use the bus, that's the thing I would want to know. I want to know when is the bus coming? Um, and I think in, in um, and I don't know if this is possible, but in Manhattan, they even have real time information about transit on some of these automatic signs, which will tell you 20 minute delay or, you know, bus out of service, whatever it is. I don't know if that would be part of it or whether it's just a schedule that shows up if you push a button. Uh, no, it's real time transit data that we would get from um, PB. PVTA um, that we would that we would connect with the signs. I mean, that's really valuable stuff. And, and I will just say just in general, um, with with the locations, we're not, um, these aren't entirely set in stone. These are what we propose. So we're welcome to feedback like you've offered. Um, just to speak to the Jones um, Library for just a moment of why we selected that site um, to kind of go in conjunction with their outdoor services that they've offered and, mm -hmm. and speaking with the library director, um, how that facility was used by so many to, to charge a device or to access mm -hmm. information. So we were trying to maybe align with some of those um, needs there, but that being said, um, the cores and the signs um, are, are not entirely set in stone in terms of where we place them. Right. I would think you'd want to put a charging station there, but it was just a question of, you know, all these little things in a row. I would just um, add, unless we have other people with comments, um, I actually really uh, appreciate the placement of the, of the chargers because um, I, you know, I've been thinking, <laughs> thinking about this in bed last night, um, and I, uh, at some point, just had a revelation about how much our our local homeless population is going to love these things, um, and uh, the guests at the Wednesday morning breakfast at the Unitarian Church plus. You know, they now Craig Stores is now there. Um, uh, my experience uh, is that that we have a highly, you know, a lot of people who would really appreciate the, the both the signs and the chargers, um, and th th these are great places for that particular uh, group of people in front of. Uh, the UUSA in front of the library um, and at the bus stop. So um, I would say they would be less likely to be at the other bus stops than at the places where they're currently located. The only thing I might suggest is the, is the, the, um, the sign that's on the south east corner of the Spring Street parking lot might, I know that it's right at the bus stop there. So there'd be, pe there'd be people there hanging out and they would be reading it, but it, uh, on the, across the parking lot on the northwest corner of that parking lot is a massive amount of, tr of foot traffic from everybody who parks there and everybody who walks um, down the sidewalk there, plus all the people from the bus, a lot of the people from the bus stop would cross there. But anyway, I just feel like it would catch more traffic on the other corner. But uh, that is, I'm not an authority and some other people may have studied the foot traffic. Um, 
So, but I really, really appreciate the thought that's gone into this and the fact that it emanated from concern about that population. That's very cool. Even though it's the advertising part of it is slightly annoying. Um, so Alyssa. So circling back to the advertising part of it, and I'm really sorry if you went over this with us on Monday, Brianna, and I just spaced it out. But since we went ahead and had you read all these other things to us, I suppose it won't be a surprise if you have to repeat something, um, is in terms of that advertising content, what limitations can we place on that to make it really clear? Because for example, you know, Supa's in other cities, right? And plenty of cities meet the threshold for advertising for alcohol and marijuana. We do not. We do not meet that threshold because of the 21 popula under 21 population here. So that's why even if we had billboards, you wouldn't see billboards for alcohol and marijuana inside the town limits of Amherst. So, but I'm sure they can do that elsewhere. And I'm not talking about a restaurant that serves cocktails. I'm talking about the lovely sign that you see as you get off uh, across the bridge and come into Hadley. And some years it's a lovely thing from the camp campus coalition against high risk drinking and other times it's have a Bud Light um, as you're welcome to Hadley. So, I realize it's a much smaller portion of the sign than a billboard, but is there a way that we're, do we have any specifications that we're putting into this as to making it clear to them, you know, so that it isn't that I walk by it one day when I'm actually able to walk around outside again and see that they're doing the, what's required to be over 21. And then I have to say, well, they're breaking the rules and then they have to fix it as opposed to being upfront about some of these things. Thank you for your questions and comments, Councillor. Um, yes, yeah, so that is, I think, part of the thing that I need to go back to SUFA with and my, my list to, to drill down into the, the ads, the prioritization, um, the local versus larger business. And now I have that specifically on my list to, to get some um, details on. And in the, our, our contract with them um, is not signed at, at all, obviously yet. So we do have opportunity if we do identify something that's not already something that is restricted or available to be restricted that we can make sure that we write that into the, um, the contract that we sign. So it sounds, oh, it sounds to me like um, we are leaning toward um, hearing more from Brianna at our next meeting rather than deciding tonight. Is that what I'm hearing from people? Alyssa? That's not what you're hearing from me. I'm totally content to get those answers provided to town council um, without having to come back through us. I don't think wow. that we add any additional value at this point. I think we've dove, we dove into a whole bunch of questions mm -hmm. here, just like you solicited from the town council. And I don't think having Brianna tell it to us and then have us telling it to the town council separately is at all necessary at this point. I think she just provides the information. We can write our report and say, we'll still be getting information on X, Y, Z, and then forward it when it's available. Um, okay, so uh, do you have a suggestion about what our, if we were sending back a report and recommendation based on what we have already, what we would be recommending? Okay, I'd recommend approval. Recommend approval conditioned on? No, because I mean, it's not conditioned on a certain answer, right? It's not conditioned on she comes back with an answer that says A plus B equals C. It's condition, it would be conditioned on she gets us more information. And so if we don't get more information, then we say at the town council meeting, hey, we asked her for more information. She didn't provide it. So our recommendation no longer stands. But if anybody else wants to try and fine tune that, I'm fine with that too. Evan, you have a thought? Yeah, I was going to say what uh, Alyssa said largely that I, um, you know, my biggest concerns with this are about um, the advertising after that initial period ends mm -hmm. um, and the possibility that we can provide a great advertising, free advertising service, uh, service for our struggling local businesses for a period of time. And then the possibility that then defaults to just national ads that are, and maybe the cost is inaccessible. Mm -hmm. However, um, 
this is a pilot. And so if that happens and we don't like it, we just don't do it again. And so the fact that it, this is something we're trying out for a year and if we don't like it, we don't have to continue with it means that I'm actually, I, I'm willing to move forward with this, even, even in the absence of the answers from Brianna, because um, it's, it's a test run and, and we'll learn more as we go. And then when the pilot's over, we have another conversation of, is this something we want to keep doing? And we'll have more information then. So yeah, I, I would support recommending approval. Dorothy? Um, I'm moving in that direction, but I would, um, I really appreciate Alyssa's reminding us of something that I probably knew, but don't know if I knew it uh, about why that we should not have advertisements for alcohol or marijuana on there because of our underage large population. Um, so my suggestion is that when it's presented to the town council again, that Brianna mentioned that and that she also mentioned the answer to the question when we said, how did this come to us? That this project was initiated by town staff in order to meet town needs, as opposed to somebody coming us to say, hey, I got this great new thing for you. Uh, Cause I think that helps make a stronger case. Um, I'm willing to do a pilot case to see how it goes. And I think we would all kind of be watching it carefully. Yeah. Um... George. I'm gonna endorse this as well. Um, I think that um, we've heard enough. I don't see any merit in it coming back to us again. And the council can, given the answers that will be presented and any other discussion can make up its mind. I think there is a little bit of time pressure here as well. I believe this has to be, uh, maybe Brianna can address this, but my foggy memory from Monday night is that, um, um, this is something that we would try to move on fairly quickly unless there was some serious problem. I don't see a serious problem. And I'd be happy to address what Councillor Ryan just alluded to. There, there is a deadline for us to um, use the funds and that's the, the end of December uh, of this year. And um, just to reiterate, I appreciate what Councillor Ross reminding that uh, we do have this as a pilot project. We're very much seeing this as a, a trial. Um, and even within that year, if we see anything that we do not like that can't be resolved, we, as part of our license agreement, it can be um, canceled at any point uh, at, at the request of the town and um, our council, um, our KP law council made sure that that was written into the contract so that we are able to, if something goes awry, we do not have to wait for the entire year in order to be done um, with, with the signs. Um, and I will also just say one more thing about the timing is that we are hoping to get the cores um, online this season, the charging station cores online this season, just because we find, feel that there is a, um, a more um, distinct need to get those online sooner. And the signs we are planning to um, bring online in the springtime. So that gives us extra time to address any um, siting locations, um, potential site work that needs to be done and also design on the, on the signs. Are these um, additional comments, Alyssa? No. Okay. I was just, I was basically going to ask if it was at all possible for the signs to go up for the holiday shopping season, but it sounds like that would be unreasonable. So we certainly could get them um, up and online, um, and it would just be that we'd have to um, move quickly to decide and um, get consensus on the the design element of that. Okay, um, it sounds like we are all in favor. Um, so uh, is there someone who would like to fashion a motion? Other than me? <laughs> I, well, we could just say uh, we recommend the town council approve the um, does it have an official name? The Sufa sign, Sufa sign and uh, core charger proposal? 
the one-year pilot program, SUFA Solar Information and Communication Signs Project. That Sounds good. Um, I'll second, if you're making that motion, I'll second it. Uh, any further discussion? All right, um, roll call vote. We will not start with Alyssa. Good. <laughs> I don't know where we are about that, but I don't want to start with Alyssa. She'll complain about it. Um, uh, okay, so, uh, all right, Dorothy. Yes. Evan. Yes. George. Yes. Alyssa. Yes. Darcy, yes. Okay, passes unanimously. And um, so that um, we'll be able to go back. It'll be in our report and come up at the town council meeting on the 7th. So, and we don't have to deal with it anymore. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Brianna, for all your good work on that. Thank you all for your time. And I hope you have a good evening. Thanks again. Thank you. Alyssa, before she goes, before she goes, Brianna, I'll bet Brianna was going to do this anyway, because of the way she was so responsive to our questions previously, but um, we can send in our report and she can send in her information as she gets it just to the full town council. And okay. that'd be great because then they'll be better prepared for December 7th. Absolutely. I will do that. That would be good to send the report to the whole town council. Um, all right. So, um, the town manager is supposed to be here right now, um, but I'm sure he'll get here shortly. Maybe we could just very briefly, oh, why don't we just pull up the, um, the public way policy so we can look at it. Um, hopefully he'll get here. This is the one that he revised to just extend Right, that? Okay. just section four, it's a, yeah, he revised the original proposal so that the only part that's underlined is section four, parts of section four. Um, so yep. that's Great. really all we need to look at is section four. Can you make it bigger, George, by any chance? There we go. Is that any better? You want it bigger? Bigger is better. OK, I'll see what I can do. There we go. I can do it even more. <laughs> Can that's, everybody see that? That's, that's huge on my screen, but I can do it more if you need it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, are you with yeah. us, Dorothy? Um, OK, so um, maybe let's just leave that for us to look at um and talk for a minute um while we're waiting for for sure. a call about our upcoming meeting and what we think might be on the work plan at the next meeting i i was assuming that we would continue with the public way policy if we don't i, I suppose it's possible that we'll vote on it tonight um sure. Are we waiting for Paul for this? Because otherwise I was going to make a motion that we recommend this to the town council using the language that was on our motion sheet from Monday. The, the section four? Yep. Okay. Do we want to discuss it first? We can discuss it after the motion if someone seconds it, but um, I, I do don't feel any that. need for discussion. So if a motion has been made, I'm happy to second it. I do have just a very simple question that I, you know, but I'd be happy to do it after the motion has been made. And Did seconded. you make a motion, 
Alyssa? Yes, I made the motion, but I don't have the language in front of me because I want it to match as close as we can to what it said on Monday night's um, town council motion sheet, which I'm sure I can find here, but is not at my fingertips this second. But we all know what I'm talking about. Yep. So maybe while I look for that, George can ask his question. Yeah, I think I just need, um, and it's probably obvious to everyone but me, but what, why this needs to be placed in here. Um, and just, you know, just, right, just an explanation for, um, this is obviously something that's going to go away at some point. Um, and we seem to be doing fine without it. So, um, but maybe we're not. So maybe there's a good reason why we need to put it in. Um, or maybe it's just, we're just covering our, you know what? So um, anyone have any idea why this is necessary? I guess it's a simple question. This is why we were waiting for the town manager. Yeah, I, I figured it was a question for Paul, but maybe somebody has insight into this. Um, it may simply be uh, dotting I's and crossing T's, or there may Andy be- Andy Joe some... said we needed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you remember that conversation. She said we needed to have the two of them together. <laughs> All right, so that may be the answer. Um, uh, it, uh, well, that's true. She had something about, was it three, whatever it is, one of these items that's mentioned, notwithstanding the above limitations in sections, da 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 one of these sections, I believe, is problematic, or at least might have some, excuse me, I'm starting. Which is why that. he fixed it to just be this. Okay. So I thought it had to do with sections. One of these items of uh, cross-referencing. Um, uh, right, he took out 3D. Okay. He took Thank out you. his Thank reference you. to 3D because I, you know, I would for one said, I don't like 3D, but right. let's go ahead and do this part. Ditto. Okay. Pull down a little bit, George, so we can see the whole thing. Uh, you wanted to make it smaller? No, scroll down. Down, sure. Yeah, I can do that. Of section four than what is here. Oh, okay. no, section four is, is, is unfortunately two pages, at least in my document. So um, right. here's the top. Let me see if I can move it up a bit. And then move this over. <laughs> this so I, okay. Sorry. Are you, is your question, why are we, why do we need this? Yeah, it's a, a dumb question, but I just need an, you know, why do we need this? Evan, why do we need this? It's just. Okay. So you said, you said that we've been operating fine without it but we yeah. haven't been operating without Good. it. We, our current public ways policy has a section four yep. that basically says for the town manager to make decisions about public ways under our policy, we delegate that authority to him because mm -hmm. otherwise our policy would require a lot of the things that he's been doing to have come to the council because you'll remember from GOL, we said anything that's a, a reservation of the public ways past 14 days needs council approval. So all those tables, all that would have needed council approval. Mm -hmm. So we added section four to our public ways policy to allow him to do that without coming to the council. Yeah, that, that I understand. But as it's written right now, right. it says um, that it expires. It's not to extend past 180 days, past the effective date of bylaw article of zoning bylaw article 14 so we tied the expiration of this section not to the end of article 14 but from the effective date which means it extent it this section if we don't fix it would expire right. in a couple of weeks from now because it expires 180 days so then this section would disappear and yet article 14 will live on until december 2021 right thank you that, so that that is this part after the end of the term right after, right. right, it switches it from right. the termination of this switching from that. And then the other part was technically our delegation only applied to those things under Article 14, but a lot of the things he was doing- A response to governor, right. the governor's order. And we right. actually technically didn't cover that. So these two things fixed those two deficiencies in the policy we have now. Thank you, thank you. All right, so, um, I, I needed those answers too, so I'm glad that you had them, Evan. Um, so, any other questions? Yes, I do. Okay, Dorothy. Okay, I have lots of papers on the public way that, and I I, I just well, 
I look at it it's, it's, if it's a is it if if it has anything to do with extending restaurants being able to use things, I understand that. Um, but if it's the second pet one that's longer on page three, which has uh, four three D in it, which is underlined, which I think things that are underlined are supposed to be changed. Dorothy, we just made the point that three D has been removed from this. So if you look oh. closely under A. It's 2A, 2B, 3B, and 3C. So 3D is not there. So okay. it was taken out by Paul precisely for the reason that you've raised, Alyssa has raised, and I probably would raise. So it's not there. Okay, so I think I'm, I think when I put some papers together, I'm missing a page because I have recommendations. I've got yesterday's eight. email, Dorothy. This is right. just from yesterday. It's like I'm practically hot off the press. I did it today right. and I was, right. I, I'm meeting at my dining room table because with two meetings back to back, I have papers everywhere just trying no, to be ready for the it's meeting. Per perfectly understandable, as Alyssa pointed out. We just got just this yesterday. literally right. So, yeah. so what what they're talking about? A is talk, Article fourteen is what's up, which is letting letting the businesses use the streets, right? And I don't have anything to say about that at all. Um, but art, but B expedites the approval process for more common requests. Um, Oh, we're only talking about section four tonight. Right. Yeah, right. I, I'm, I'm scrolling around. <laughs> okay, what is section four then? It's on the screen. Yeah, okay. we're going to look see at it. the remaining sections at probably the next, our next meeting. Okay, so this section four is only about restaurants and things in the street, right? Sidewalk cafes, drinks. Okay, I have no problem with any of that then, if that's what it's about. Because, because some of the other stuff, I looked at it quickly and I thought, it then I said, then TSO will have absolutely nothing to say about the public way anymore. Um, right, which is why we asked him to take it out. You're okay. exactly right, Dorothy. Good. Okay, so I'm fine now. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? Um, okay, so, well, let's have a roll call vote then. Um, uh, Evan. Yes. George. Yes. Alyssa. Yes. Darcy, yes. Dorothy. Yes. Okay, it's unanimous. Um, and our, our motion can just reference the November 18th memo he sent us. Emily, did, do you, did you get that? Kind of. Do you want to just repeat? <laughs> the, um... <laughs> I understand. I do. I understand. The November completely. 18th memo I got. <laughs> Good. That, that's excellent. So the November 18th memo, um, it's probably best to name the policy again. So it's the town council policy regarding the control mm -hmm. and regulation of the public ways. And he sent us a memo on the 18th telling, showing us which things were underlined that was a revision since Monday. And so I think if we reference his memo and we reference the actual policy that's being changed, then we should be covered. Okay. And sorry, who made that motion? I did, Alyssa. All right. All right, got it. Thank you. So I, I just want to add how important minutes are. And um, Emily, I find some of this very confusing and you really should just shout out when you don't know what we're talking about because <laughs> we're not going to know what we talked about in a week afterwards if it's not in the minutes correctly. Yeah. I mean, some of I mean we know what we're talking about, but the rest of the world may be confused. Uh, yes. We always know what we're no, talking, we're talking about. about. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, that will also go into our report uh, for the December seventh meeting. Um, and if you if you have a question about that, Emily, just send send me a, an email, and I'll help you with that motion, the wording. Um, okay, okay, thank you. So. Um, I guess we can move on to the appointments. We'll do them without Paul. 
Um, let's start with um, the CDBG Advisory Committee. There's just one appointment to that. Um, actually, uh, usually we do count on him to explain things. Maybe we'll have to pull up that memo um, because I don't have that information in front of me. Um, the, I, I'm just going to say I read the memos and all I can say is that Amherst has the greatest opportunity to draw on completely trained professional people to work for nothing. Uh, probably, you know, there are very few towns outside of it. They were excellent um, um, candidates uh, and, you know, I just had no questions about any of them. So. Um. Okay, well, let's um, go, let's just look at the CDBG Advisory Committee. Um, we have one person recommended, um, Rika Clement. Um, and oh, here we go. Good. Um, so we can just read that profile. That's good. Any any um, comments or questions or concerns? Uh, Evan. So I would have said this to the town manager if he was here, because I'm always trying to provide feedback on these memos, but I found it really useful that we were told um, that she has been attending meetings of the committee. Um, that's something that I think that um, we, we shouldn't have as a requirement, but we should be encouraging of, if you want to get appointed to a committee, start going to the meetings, see what it's like, see, understand what the responsibilities are. And the fact that she has been doing that is encouraging. And the fact that he told us she's been doing that uh, is also, I think, a really good thing. So maybe that will make its way back to the town manager at some point. Yeah. Uh, Alyssa? Yeah, I can't emphasize that enough, having been doing appointments for many, many years prior to town council, the number of people who applied for something based on the name of it, rather than knowing when the meetings were or knowing what they were actually doing was rather shocking to me. Um, seems obvious to us as town councilors, but not so much to the public. And so I do think that met, like Evan said, it's not a requirement, but we've touched on it associated with our interview questions too. Like how familiar are you actually with the work of this body? And I do think that is definitely something he should, he should not, he doesn't have to mention the negative. Like they've never been to a meeting and don't know anything about it, but he does, it should definitely be mentioned that they have been attending and we should be encouraging people to attend meetings, especially now, right? It's actually more accessible to a lot more mm -hmm. people because they don't have to drive anywhere to do it. Okay, um, so I, uh, unless there are other comments, uh, I move to recommend the town council approve uh, following person recommended by the town manager to serve on the CDBG advisory committee for a one year term expiring June 30th, 2021, Rika Clement. Second? I can second that. Okay, any other comments? Um, I just had a question about the composition, is that where it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and this is, I apologize for taking up our time, but it says members may serve on other town multiple member bodies, but CDBG advisory committee membership is not to exceed one individual per other multiple member body. And maybe that's obvious to all of you, but I read that, I still read that, I'm not quite sure what it means. Yeah. Um, I know, uh, I know. Thank you. I thought Alyssa might know. Alyssa, what does that mean? <laughs> yes, it's you, you wrote that, Alyssa. Did you write that sentence? Yeah, I bet you um, did. I wrote it a long time ago. <laughs> and actually, somebody else helped write it a long time ago. Um, <laughs> and I can tell you exactly what that's about. Thank you. What does it we, mean? We, at one point, had a number of people, all wonderful people, right? Not criticism of the people at all. But we actually, at one point, had two or three members of the Block Grant Advisory Committee were all serving on housing committees. 
And so while it makes yeah. sense to have connections and it makes sense mm -hmm. for CPAC to have representation, just like it makes sense for Black Grant to have representation, it felt it helped it it felt to applicants like it was too heavily weighted. But because nobody had said there was a rule, then that was who was volunteering at that particular moment was a bunch of people from housing commit housing related committees that we had at that time. And so again, no disrespect to the wonderful service that they provided when they were on block grant. And of course they looked at everybody evenly, but it felt bad to some of the applicants. And so we decided that we better go ahead and, and write that into the charge. And that was quite a few years ago. So if that, what that means essentially, if I understand it is that um, an individual member can be a member of another multiple member body that's permitted, but yes. you can't have more than one that belongs to the same multiple member body. Is that the idea? Right. Another... And so you shouldn't appoint two members of the trust, right, for exactly. example, okay. to this. All right. I don't know if there's a way to say that clear, but it, now, I, now I understand it. So uh, I understand what you're saying. I do. Yeah. I'm not sure how to say it clear either, or I would okay. have fixed it. I'm glad you understand. Yeah, exactly. So fine. Thank you. That was, I apologize, but that was a question I had. Otherwise, that was it. So. Okay. Um, I think we're ready to vote. Um, George. Uh, yes. Lisa. I'm all ready. Yes. Darcy, yes. Dorothy? Yes. Evan? Yes. Okay. Moving on. Um, that was unanimous. Um, so now we have five recommendations to the personnel board. Um, and I am going to miss Paul for this part because I really wanted him to um, talk about Tony Butterfield um, because Tony Butterfield has been on the personnel board since 2006. Um, and for some reason, he received a three year term uh, where other people got two or one. And so I don't understand that. That does not seem to fit our policy. Um, I had I had a similar question. I just would point out, Darcy, that he does address that in some detail. I believe he does in this section under summary of process. So what he says here, if I'm Mr. Butterfield has been a member of the personnel board since 2006. And then he goes, I don't need to read it. You all have read it, I assume, but you can read it again. Um, so he makes a very strong case for Butterfield and tries to, I, this is, I assume, what he would say to you if he were present. You may not find that answer satisfactory, but this is, I take it, his answer to that question, which yeah, we've all of us had. He yeah. didn't answer the question of why he wouldn't just appoint him for one year. Okay. Yeah, I guess you got um, I this doesn't answer that, I guess. Um, because it doesn't make sense to me. Someone that has been on there that long would get right. appointed for three years. Right. And I get the I guess also he's he the reason he says uh, new human HR director, but after a year that would you know the person would no longer be new. So that's a, I think a fair question to ask him. Why three years instead of one? I suspect it's because he may, in fact, run the committee and do it very, very well, and that the town feels that it's a very good job, and, and I, that's what I suspect. So he might basically be, be able to serve as long as he wants to, right, basically. So as long as, at least as long as Paul's town manager and Butterfield wants to be on this body, um, Paul will keep reappointing him. Right, but we have the other town policy presents problems, but um, yeah. Do you think there'll ever be a circumstance where we do not approve something that comes before us? <laughs> well, I would think if, if the process isn't followed, and that's something I noticed about this, and I would have asked him if he were present, um, is that unlike all the other appointments I think he's ever made, he had a kind of advisory committee formed. But if I read this correctly, and please correct me if I'm missing something, it looks like he did this on his own. There's no 
there's no, uh, uh, you know, what's the committee that is basically helps him with the appointments. None of that is mentioned. Um, he seems to have made this decision um, without consulting anyone else, which he's perfectly free of doing, but um, is not his usual process. So that's um, one thing I noticed. And that's what I always look for, first of all. Does he follow the usual process where he brings in other people and there's a, an interview team and they talk to each other and then Paul makes his decision? Here, it seems like that did not happen. And maybe there's a reason for that. I don't know, um, but I don't see it here. I don't see any process statement. Um, or the summary of the process is basically just uh, uh, just describing the people that are on the board and then his reason for keeping Butterfield. So does anyone else have a concern about that? Because, um, I mean, uh, we could conceivably send that one appointment back to him with our, with our questions and then deal with it at our next meeting um, so that he can, ex he can explain those things. I, I feel he's given more explanation here than he does other places. And he's saying, I really rely on this person. So mm -hmm. I know Tony Butterfield slightly, I know his wife, and I know he's a very unassuming, quiet person. So I suspect he's somebody who just offers quiet judgment, which Paul has found has been extremely useful. But because I mean, he, I've never seen him write this stuff for anybody else. So I think he's telling us, I really feel I need this person. And what more could he say beyond that? Um, other thoughts? Wait a minute, I'm lost. You yes. Uh, Alyssa. So be sure and tell Paul that I stuck up for him at this meeting, given how much trouble I normally give him. So um, building one other people have said, actually, he did follow his usual process, George. Okay. All right. But I'll tell you why. Because he doesn't interview reappointments. Ah, uh, These are all reappointments. Yeah. And so, right, well, that's not our process, but that's yeah. his process. Okay. He doesn't interview reappointments. Yeah, you're right. So... So for that same way, he didn't follow the process. The other thing that I want to point out is um, I don't like one-off type situations either where I say, oh, but this committee is so special. But one, it actually is because of its relationship with town employees. It's like really different than all of our other committees. And the way Paul described that people trust Mr. Butterfield, I think is really huge. But also, let me point, can keep getting sent back by the Board of Library Trustees year after year after year if that's what they choose to do, right? So that longevity can exist. Charlie Sherpa can keep getting chosen by town employees to be there year after year after year. So I have a little bit of a hard time saying no to the town manager, even though Tony Butterfield served in this role so long to say, yeah, I know those other bodies can choose to keep sending people back, but you can't. And so I would really like to hear from him at some point that he's working on recruiting new people so that we don't eventually see a personnel board that everybody served 20 years, <laughs> and like there's never a change, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is not to say I want anybody to resign, please don't hear it that way. Um, so I, I share the concern and I absolutely do think Darcy in response to your earlier question, would we ever say no? Absolutely, we can say no, we have, and we absolutely could do that. I just don't think this is the case and I don't think pushing him to do a one year appointment, given the explanation he's provided, given the conditions of two people being able to be sent back by their committees year after year, given how complex dealing with personnel is right now with the COVID situation, I'm thinking it's not a great time for a change. Um, I guess I'm the only one that feels that th this needs more explanation. Um, so maybe what I would propose is that we just separate that out so that I can vote against it and you we can we can vote for all the other ones together um what evan 
you you want to have us vote on four people together and then vote on one name individually? Yeah. I don't uh, I don't personally feel comfortable with that. I think that is embarrassing by singling somebody out. I understand your reasons, Darcy. I do. And they're, right. and they're uh, process. I understand that. Separate but, emotion out like that. Um, it would be hurtful. And we've we've never done that with any with any batch of appointments, even in OCA. I mean, you'd be free, Dar Darcy, to vote against it, and then in your report explain why you voted against it, and you could certainly speak to that at town council. Um, but I, I agree that that separating out an individual um, seems a little it's certainly something we've never done, and it does seem to be um, potentially uh, uh, hurtful or at least somewhat, uh, you know, uh, insulting especially for someone who served as long as this, well, it doesn't matter how long you've served. Right. Um, so if you have an, I think if you have an objection to a particular member in the group, you can vote against uh, re you know, recommending these appointments and then explain why. But, right, but I absolutely, anyone can ask to separate out uh, a motion into its parts. But, so, but we can then refuse to pass that motion. Right. Yeah. So if you want to do that, you could make that motion and then I think we'll probably defeat it, but you're perfectly free to do that. No, you don't have to. You, I have the right. That's Any me. person who's, who proposes to separate out the parts of a motion mm -hmm. can do it without, without a motion. We mm -hmm. have the right to do that. I guess there's a question as to whether or not there are separate parts here. And if you're going to do that, then I think you should be separating all the people out. I don't, I don't understand. That's fine. We could do that. We could separate out all the people if you think that. that oh, there's Paul. Oh, my goodness. Maybe he can solve. Maybe we can solve this problem. Well, I don't, yeah. I don't see how we can solve it. I'm able to because I think that I still want to do it. But Paul. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry I'm late. Welcome. Um, I stuck up for you, Paul. I wanted that to be on the record. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> and Dorothy did too. I did. Uh, so we're we're in the middle of the the um, personnel board uh, appointments mm -hmm. and have been discussing Tony Butterfield and how long he's been on the board. And so and we looked saw we discussed the profile and uh, you know his long years of experience, et cetera, et cetera. And um, Alyssa gave all the arguments why he's, it's a good idea to keep him. And so we would like to hear from you though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I haven't uh, very often brought someone who has, I don't, I don't abide by the two term limit. I know the select board had that, but that's not necessarily, but I do think that it's a wise thing to have turnover. So I start from that. Uh, it's unusual if there's someone who is, um, in a situation where I believe they bring such um, a, a skill set, but also for me, I think I tried to say this in my memo. Um, it's very hard for me to have people I can talk to about senior staff with other senior staff. Uh, Mr. Butterfield brings that ability to me to say when I have when I'm struggling with something with a management issue, other than other managers or confidence outside the town. He has a, a wide range of experience, both through the management field and knowing the town in a really strong way that I can sit down with him. And I've, I did it this summer, actually, and said, here's, here's some things I'm thinking through and what's, um, and here's what's happening. What advice do you have? And I find his advice to always be very sage. Um, and, um, and since this is a committee that is advisory to the town manager, um, and is a conduit for non-union employees to communicate to uh, have a third party that they can communicate with when they're not unionized. Um, I felt like it's in, important for me to have that person um, available and is more important than, than the sort of theory of, of turnover at this point in time for me. Um, and also the second point being that since our new HR director is relatively new um, to the town, uh, and he provided really good guidance to our previous HR director um, that it was important. That's, that's another factor that played into my thinking on this. So the second question was, um, 
why not a one-year term since he's been there since 2006? Um, why well, we, so, so, so the two that get one year term, so the, the charter calls for the terms to be staggered. The two that are, are one year terms now are ones that get appoint, sort of get appointed every year. You know, they're the ones that are recommended either by employees or by the library trustees. So that's always going to be a one year term. And then to make sure, that, and then um, for Rebecca Woodland and Catherine Porter, this would extend out their second terms according to how, when they started their service. Um, so, um, yeah, I could have said one year term or two years or two, but I chose three years because yeah, I think that his, his contributions are very valuable to me. Um, Evan? Yeah, it is also, cause I, I really hope we can get to consensus on, on this. You wanted to know that this isn't, um, necessarily, um, I don't want to say this is usual because we usually do see more turnover in a lot of these other bodies, but it's also not unusual. I was thinking back to some of the appointments we did on OCA, um, and I was thinking about, I think it was Rosemary Koffler, who has served mm -hmm. the Council on Aging since 2005, I think, so even longer than um, the candidate here and who OCA unanimously recommended the town council approve a three-year term for. Um, I believe we also dealt with, uh, perhaps I think it was um, water supply protection, which was another one that oftentimes is hard to get recruits who has someone serving on it from the early 2000s and we recommended um, approval. So we have had situations before where there's been someone who has served for a very long time, um, but has been seen as a real asset. And, and you know, Darcy, you voted for Rosemary in that instance, um, because we were told that that was a person who was really an asset to that committee and that it was a committee that doesn't have people clamoring to get onto it. And so to me, this is just another example of, of that. Uh, Dorothy? Well, if I understand it correctly, the two other members um, are appointed by other bodies. And I guess they, they are approved by um, the advisory committee, but they're appointed by other bodies. And it's always a one year term at a time. So this way, I'll, even though he served a long time, is a way of maintaining or at least assuring continuity because you don't control or we don't control the other nominees. Their sending board controls that. Um, and the fact that there's often consistency um, with some of them doesn't mean that that's what will happen. So I, I have no problem with having this, a long serving person have a three year term under these conditions. Yeah, um, I have a problem with it. And I don't, I, 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 uh, I find it strange that the committee thinks that I should not be able to uh, vote against one of the people recommended. Um, this is what we're here for, right? Um, so, but if, if there's a problem with, um, I mean, it's fine with me to, to vote on them all separately so that there's nothing odd about it. Pam or Dorothy? Uh, Alyssa? I move to approve a three-year term for Tony Butterfield and for Rebecca Woodland, a two-year term for Catherine Porter, and a one-year term for Tr Christopher Hoffman and Charles Sherpa, as listed on the town manager's memo. I'll second that. We talked about this in terms of how we thought it would make various individuals feel. I totally understand your concern, Darcy. I don't consider it to rise to the level of not approving the person's appointment. I get that you would much prefer a one-year appointment for that. And the reality is we're going, I want us to vote on this as a group like we do for everything else rather than calling a particular situation out when it is is literally over a process question. If it was over the fact that an individual was a problem as an individual, which could certainly face us at some point, then I would understand separating it out. 
but there's been no problem expressed with the individual simply with the length of term. And so I find just don't find it would be appropriate to vote them separately, which is why I made the motion I did. Okay, well, I move to separate them out. Um, or I don't move. I we don't have a rule that allows for that, Darcy. That's not in our town council rules. And you cannot just invoke Robert's rules when it's convenient. That's not in our rules as a town council. Paul, do you know anything about that? I don't. I'd have to look it up. I, I, I'm... It's not in our rules. That doesn't mean that Robert's rules can be invoked at the expense of what our town council rules say. Okay. Well, I already expressed earlier that I wanted to separate it out. So um, I <laughs> find it really strange that you would just go ahead and make the motion when I've said that I wanted to separate them out because I- And we said we didn't want to separate it out. We all said that except you. It only takes one person, one person- But, but Robert's rules is not compelling here. You don't get to play that card. Why not? Why would Because I? that's not what we work oh. under. We yeah, work I under see. our town council rules. Okay. Yeah, but let's think about just because you think you can do something, it doesn't mean it's a good idea to do something. Uh, I, you know, so I, I just want to put that in. Well, um, I, I find it very strange that that this committee is somehow not allowing me to vote the way I want to on on something. You know, you can vote the whole package down. No, I can't. No, I can't. I can vote, no, if we, we, we the motion was to to accept the term, the recommendation for terms for three people, and you vote yes or no, and you can vote no. Just, okay. just to, to put a little bit of precedent, there was an instance on OCA with Public Shade Tree Committee where Darcy, you objected to only one of the people who were being put forward. And so I believe in that case, you abstained from the whole package. But even in then, your, your issue is with one person. We didn't separate the people out. You just abstained on the package and then explained in, we explained in the report what where your abstention came from. And so I, I think that that's what we're trying to get to is you can explain why you vote the way you do in the report, but even when we've had an issue with one individual, we've never separated out appointments either on this committee or on OCA. And so it seems like that's for a reason. And, and it seems better to do what you did last time with Public Shade Tree Committee. Do you, are, are, is your hand up, Alyssa? Yeah, I just want to talk about the practical aspect of the vote. I get that you're very frustrated with me and I, un I understand and I accept that. At the same time, the reality is when we vote, we vote by majority. The majority recommendation is going to go to the town council. There is not going to be a full page of explanation about one vote that doesn't like this term. There will be an explanation, but there will also be an explanation that the rest of us thought it was okay. It won't just say, nothing about what the rest of us said. And so when it gets to the town council level, there will again be a majority vote that is likely to make the appointments. So I'm not sure that we need to fight about how we did the vote as long as you get to explain your very valid concern about one year term for a holdover versus a three year term. Okay, I guess, I guess I'm just, um, uh, uh, I don't know how to respond to the fact that that somehow or other the committee thinks I shouldn't be able to vote the way I want to. So, um, and it, it, I don't think that it that we need to have a practice of all of us doing the same thing each time, voting for the whole group together. We don't have to do that. Um, so, um, but, but, you know, I, I, it's not worth arguing about this much. So why don't we go ahead with Alyssa's motion and, um, you know, I am going to file some kind of complaint about it with Lynn, because I don't think that you should have done this. Um, and, um, so just, is there any other discussion about it? Is that a hand that you want to, is it 
your hand still relevant, Lisa? It would perhaps not be as helpful as I might want to be to say, Lynn's not the boss of me, but um, that is your, obviously your prerogative. Um, okay, so um, uh, Alyssa, this is a roll call vote. And then we're back at the beginning of the alphabet. Thank you for always um, rotating that. I appreciate it. Yes, my vote is yes. Okay, and my vote is no. Dorothy? Yes. Um, Evan? Yes. George? Yes. Okay. All right, so what time do we have? Is it, is it time yet? We got 10 minutes. Um, all right, so um, they will be forwarded so that they go to in the report to the December 7th council meeting. Um, we should probably talk for a minute about our agenda um, for the next meeting, um, which I'm assuming is gonna be uh, part two of the public way policy. Talk more about that because we have to get it back by January 25th. Um, and probably uh, the second day of surveillance technology bylaw because they will have their answers by then. And um, Paul is has promised to get the staff feedback by um, next week to them. Um, so those would be the two big items. Um, I don't, I would hope that we could start the North Common on December 17th, maybe. Would that work for you, Paul? Yes, we're prepared for that. Um, and uh, do you have thoughts, Dorothy and George, about when you want to go forward with your parking issue? Well, we're waiting on, Guilford says they're working on it. And I don't see any point in rushing him on that. So he has to come back to George and me and then we have to talk about it with him. So um, I'm not sure we're ready for the next meeting, but George, what do you think? We could take 10 minutes of the committee's time and give them a sense, not right now, but at a future meeting soon, and just give them a sense of what we're doing to get yes. immediate feedback. If you all put up your hands and say, no, no, stop doing that, um, that would be useful. But so it'd be perhaps at the next meeting if there's time, and I don't think we'd need much. And okay. we might also have something back from Guilford by that point, so we could be more specific. But mm -hmm. we could explain um, what we're trying to accomplish in a, in a succinct way and get some feedback from you as to whether you think we should, that's a good idea or whether it should stop or whatever. But it wouldn't be a formal at length, you know, report, it would just be an update. Um, an update. That could be useful, but which is what we would have done tonight, um, but we don't have Guilford's report, so waiting another no. two weeks. And if, if, we, if there's no time, we can still wait, but it'll be an update. Yeah, it's sometimes hard to tell how much these topics are gonna, how much time they're going to take. Well, this would be 10 minutes, and if we spot more than 10 minutes and 30 seconds, you could just mute me um, or just cut us off. But uh, it, it's a your decision, but I mean, it, time would be up to you. Yeah, I think that we could probably, if you would be ready for it yeah. at our next meeting, just in case we have the time, that would be good. Fine. Uh, because fine. We, we may have it at our next meeting. Um, depending on how fast we decide things. We can get back in two ways. If it turns out we don't have much time, we would present it and you could you could send feedback, you know, which we would then have written out for the, to start the next meeting. Um, I mean, we could be very flexible because we are not time dated on this one. And we, as we saw at our last uh, town council meeting, all of a sudden it was just raining from heaven topics for TSO. So we do not control our agenda that much. So we can be very adjustable. Right, and um, Paul, uh, could you tell us other issues that are coming down the pike? Um, the other one is the um, illegal discharge 
stormwater uh, bylaw that the council needs to approve by June 30th, 2021. So we want to introduce that to the council. Um, I forget which we've chosen a meeting in December, one of the two meetings in December, and then that will most likely we think will get depends on the, what the council decides will most likely get referred to TSO. And that'll be a sort of more of a technical complex uh, conversation, I think. And it's something that's required by the state for us to approve. And there's a couple of other water and sewer bylaws coming after, yes, the, after the first of the year. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, do we want to really, Evan? Hey, can I just ask you a question regarding North Common? Um, I, I guess I'm, I'm thinking, and what, so the big, the big question right now is before um, CPAC and there's a request. Do we know when CPAC will have a recommendation on that? Uh, Paul? I think they're voting tonight, actually. So we'll have the CPAC recommendation by the time we talk about the North Common. If they act, if they decide to act tonight, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, why, why don't we, um, I think that's, if you look at the work plan, FYI, uh, all of these things are listed on there. Um, and that can give you an idea of, of um, what we just said. I think I do have to revise it a little bit. Um, uh, so shall we approve our minutes? We have our our, our December 12th and our December 5th. Um, and um, Emily, if you notice the December 5th minutes were, were more extensive, I think at Dorothy's request. Um, you, you, mean, you mean November? I mean- Yeah, November. <laughs> November. Oh, that's all right, yeah, November. November. November 5 and November 12. Yes, so November, um, so um, do we have any discussion or issues with them? I have none. Okay, so I think I will do them both together then. I, I move we approve the uh, November 5th and November 12th, uh, 2020 minutes. I can second that motion. All right, um, I say yes. Dorothy? Yes. Evan? Yes. George? Yes. Alyssa? Abstain. Okay, so they are approved. Um, and FYI, I don't know if you've looked at SharePoint lately, but um, I spent it a lot of time getting everything organized on there and there's a lot of all of the all of the minutes all the reports all the town manager appointments if you look in any of those folders they're all everything is there wow. um and so i'm trying to get it on our web page uh so that so that you know we have it available for everybody but it's um it's all and i even have the years and the dates in the right order. That took a long time to reorganize, but it's well, all there. Many, many thanks, Darcy. Many, many thanks. Really yeah, cool. yeah, this being a chair of a committee. Ah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of time at the computer. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad you brought that up, Darcy, because I was actually going to thank you for that because I was like, wow, a resources folder that actually is useful. <laughs> so we, I hadn't quite felt like I'd accomplished that in some of my previous uh, work on the council. But, but of course, I want something more. And what I want ah. more is if you look at, not in SharePoint, it's beautiful, is if you look at the GOL webpage, and I know this just because I was just working on a proclamation is on the side, they have all their um, things about like how they do their reviews and frequently asked questions on what's a proclamation, what's a citation, all that kind of stuff. It's right there on the side of their 
GOL webpage. And since we have a process, right, that other people need to know about, it would be great if we could put the current version of that, which is thankfully in our resources folder, if we could put that on ours too, on the TSO page on the side. Right now, our TSO page on the side is, is kind of limited, but GOL has taken full advantage of that. And I think we could too, because we, we're going to have people coming to us and we could have it right there for them. I think that's a good idea. I'd like to have our videos um, linked there too, uh, which I think either GOL or CRC has. Um, so yeah, I did start the conversation with Athena about getting all that stuff up there. So, but I'll add the, uh, the review process. That would be good. All right, I think we're done. On to the next meeting. Um, <laughs> uh, and it is time, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so I declare us adjourned at 626. See you in four minutes. Okay, great. Bye-bye.